Danny, welcome. Why are coffee and dairy shunned on carnivore very often? And is decaf a way around caffeinated coffee? No, I don't think they're shunned too much. But no, not shunned. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe it's specific channels who need to be a little bit more strict and who need to be on a lion diet, which makes sense because typically coffee and dairy can cause a little bit more inflammation for those who need to heal autoimmune issues. So I always like to reference somebody like Michaela Peterson versus maybe someone like Raymond when he first started. They're going to start off carnivore in a very different fashion because of what they need to heal. So Raymond, why don't you start? Like, What are your thoughts on this? Yeah. So first of all, on, on dairy, I, I feel like that's a great way to start carnivore because you've got, uh, well, not just a great way. So you're going to eat meat too, but this encourages your appetite. So we're all about eating more, right? So anything that encourages appetite, such as dairy is great. Now, all of that said is if you don't have any, uh, any issues with dairy, you know, you don't have lactose intolerant or anything like that. And of course, we're not talking about milk uh, from the grocery store. If we're talking about milk, it's raw milk. So that's another distinct. That's why we don't like the dairy uh, too much on that part. Now, as far as coffee, coffee is a different story. Coffee, we notice that that dampens our hunger. So that's why so many people are skipping breakfast. It, but their body actually is crying for food. But we're dampening it with the chemical that's, that's in coffee. And yes, decaf kind of does the same thing. So this is why we say, hey, coffee as a dessert, which is part of the priming protocol, eating three meals a day, coffee as dessert, not feeling any hunger throughout the day so that your cravings aren't there. So that coffee has a lot of other things. Read Caffeine Blues if you're interested in quitting coffee. Um, mm -hmm. It's got a lot of facts on there that you didn't realize how many chemicals comes in coffee. Remember, mm -hmm. coffee, coffee beans create a certain pesticide, which, which is the caffeine. So the coffee products creates that so bugs don't get on it. It agitates them to the point where they'll die because they're so agitated and anxious. That's what it does to us. In a way, we use that as an advantage to do more things, but it can get to the point where it can cause extra anxiety, sleeplessness, all of that stuff. Hmm. Yeah. And is decaf a way around caffeinated coffee? Did you answer that already? Yeah, I mean, I'm just, I'm just gonna say, I mean, if if you dilute poison, you know, is it still poison? I say yes. So in a way, it's kind of the same. It may be a little bit better of a poison, but I don't really buy that. Okay, Sorry, so that you're loud. the reason why people think coffee is <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. Coffee is not a problem. <laughs> Enjoy your coffee. Gosh, you know that. Rem <laughs> that, rem that reminds me of. Uh, should have used poison. My bad. <laughs> yeah, this reminds me of something my brother said once. He said, uh, he said the definition of an oxymoron is when uh, he called the pickaxe. He goes, we had to go buy a new pickaxe for digging a trench. He goes, oh, that's a good pickaxe. Let me buy that one. And his uh, boss told him, there's no such thing as a good pickaxe. <laughs> 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 that's an oxymoron. There's no such thing as a good, a good poison. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. That's that's a hard truth. I'm still trying to swallow, but I don't care. I'll still drink coffee. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Let, let's be honest. You're six year carnivore, Bella, yeah. and you've had all of this healing, keeping sure. coffee. So to me, that's not a problem. You know, you okay. guys want to hold on to your coffee. Hold on to it. If it's affecting you, though, and you're honestly feeling like there's an effect that's negative to you, then yes, try go yeah. without. You went in without it for a little bit. Yeah, you probably it's, saw a lot more positive than the coffee than without the coffee. Right? Every time you talk about my phase of coming off coffee, your face just gets so sad. <laughs> yeah, and you awesome. guys missed that phase. I don't think you guys were on the team yet, no. but I, yeah. I did quit coffee cold turkey actually with Raymond's recommendation, and I don't think he's ever seen me so. Just I was sad. like, "Have the coffee, Bella. Have the coffee. You need the coffee. Please have the coffee. <laughs> Get back on." Uh, yeah, that's what Yeah. So yeah. Raymond, you got me to quit coffee, and uh, when I joined SVG and started doing priming, I followed. I was a good little soldier and and cut <laughs> coffee out for six yeah. weeks, and um, I, I really didn't feel any different one way or another. But it took away. I already had a problem where I wasn't eating with my wife dinner because she's not carnivore. And so um, 
we were missing the morning ritual of having our morning coffee together. And so I re-added it in because it's our, it's the way we start our day together. Yeah. So, and I, I won't give it up because of the ritual. And, and the whole time I was off, I drank hot water. I, I still, which I thought was really weird. And I didn't think I'd ever like that, but I actually liked it. But yeah. she likes me to get up. I get up first and I always make the coffee. And uh, so it's, it's a way to serve her and, you know, I just follow That's through, but I, I could go back to the water, but I think there is cultural stuff here where it's worth the risk. But I do agree if you're struggling with your appetite, um, it does artificially change your appetite for fasting and, and also for yeah. priming. That's you got to be careful with it. So it's not a bad thing to give it up short term. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And, and I love Great that. Point. I love that. Seventy-five years of uh, coffee, and it must be a slow poison. Some people <laughs> seem to tolerate it with no problems at all. I mean, it's incredible. Yeah. But there everyone... are some people who are very sensitive to it too. So I just know that it does affect our eating. We can't. Yeah. So if we, so that's all I'm saying is to eat it as a dessert. At least at first, drink it as a dessert. For Later me, on, I... when you're more solid carnivore, it doesn't matter. For me, all those drinks that were stimulus and sweeteners and all those things, what I found handy by not having them is that it was a big part of what I was putting in my body that was, uh, you know, like say, staving off hunger and all those things. And so really, and I keep saying this, I think Jordan Peterson has this uh, right the best where carnivore is really just a very uh, effective animal-based elimination diet so that you can see what stuff's doing. And when I got rid of all the sodas and the coffees and the things uh, I was able to finally actually see what a real hunger hormone was like, see what a uh, real satiation was like and, and be able to hear things a lot clearer. I think now, mm -hmm. I, I don't know, after two years, I might be able to add it back in and see what it does. But before it was just, it was too many variables to, to exactly. kind of get mm -hmm. my bearings on what was yeah. going on. There's too many things to track at the time. That's that's a good point too. Don't overwhelm yourself. But Dr. Phil, thank you for bringing up the appetite and I how coffee does affect your hunger, your satiation, just your appetite in general. So keep that in mind for those who are new here watching the live stream, <clears throat> wondering the same. Um, it's like I, I try just want to add. That, yeah. I just want to add. I'm sorry, but my 95 year old dad drinks coffee every morning. So. <laughs> That's right. exactly. Yeah, okay. I, I know many people that have and live that long. And I actually, who's that guy who smoked a cigar every single day? And he lived George Burns. Life. George, yeah, George Burns, Burns lived to be a hundred. Yeah, hundred. Right. Right. You know, so you know, there you are. You know what's going to happen though, Phil? When your dad passes away at 120, Raymond's going to go. See, I told you. <laughs> yeah, <I know. laughs> you know, there you go. The coffee dinner. <laughs> I'm sure he yeah. will. Yeah. 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 <laughs>